And so to come back to the history of the, this 33-year-old patient, she's had solar urticaria for about seven years. It's a pathology which started suddenly and which has been getting worse over the years. It's an incredibly debilit debilitating pathology for this patient because she can tolerate roughly five seconds of sun at the most before the rash starts to break out. So sh she has to hide from the sun and cover herself. And when you have any professional or family activity, obviously, it's excessively complicated. She has already undergone quite a few preventative treatments, which haven't been particularly effective. Well, they were to begin with, but now it seems to be getting worse, so we definitely have a therapeutic problem with this patient. This is a solar simulator, in other words, a device which is capable of reproducing precisely the same rays as those of the sun, the lamp which emits the rays is situated in this cover here, and the radiation produced by the lamp is administered by a computer. So we can program the doses we're going to administer to the patients in advance. For example, in this case, it was a question of determining a minimal erythematous dose. In other words, we programmed the doses, which you can see here on the screen, which correspond to the ones which will be administered behind this cover. And the doses will be administered by the successive opening of these covers in such a way that when the patient puts his back against the plate, he can receive the radiation very gradually, which is what we call the determination of the MED, the minimal erythematous dose. But, but obviously, we can also use it in other situations. The patient that we're examining now has a particularly debilitating solar urticaria, and so we can, and we are testing to find out the smallest dose capable of activating her urticaria. Okay, we'll get started, and it, and if that's all right with you. So here we have small ap apertures which are all open and which will gradually close and we shall examine the patient in the seconds just after the procedure and normally the solar urticaria should appear. Our patient is confirming that he's starting to itch. So we'll, you will gradually start to see here what is essentially a rash. But little by little we are starting to see the appearance of an edema which obviously defines the urticaria, even though the patient is currently on treatment, despite the fact that she is taking preventative histaminic treatment. And obviously she has to be able to go outside sometimes without its being too uncomfortable even so. Here you are, you can see it appearing. You can see the zone here where it has appeared first, here at the base, and gradually the others are appearing too. Here you can clearly see the edema which has appeared. The skin is coming off slightly. Here we can see it very clearly, which proves that it's urticaria. So this is a typical example of a solar urticaria being activated. Therefore, in this way, we can determine the minimal urticarial dose in the same way that a minimal erythematous dose characterizes sunburn. Right. Now we shall proceed to the second part of the investigation. In other words, we have demonstrated that the patient has a solar urticaria activated by the sun's rays, simulated by the device. And now we are going to try and define which wavelength is responsible. If it's ultraviolet A rays, or if it's ultraviolet B rays, if it's visible rays, and so on and so forth. Now, to do this, the device that we are using is equipped with a monochromator, which enables light to be cut into slices, as it were, and so in this case we are going to make slices of UVA and then slices of UVB. The light comes out of this fiber optic. We can see the light coming out here. We have the ultraviolet A rays coming out from this small fiber here. And it will be applied to the patient's skin for a very short period of time at a dose which we will define at the beginning. And in this way we will see the appearance or non-appearance of this eruption. 
according to whether or not the patient is sensitive to this wavelength. And so now we are going to proceed with this monochromatic investigation. And we're going to begin with ultraviolet A rays, I think, with an extremely weak dose because the exposure time is one second, which corresponds to about 35 millijoules of ultraviolet A radiation, which is extremely weak. Straight away, we note the place where we started, obviously, and we are going to continue next to it with a dose that is twice that of the preceding one. As the patient is particularly sensitive, of course, we will not use very high doses. We have completed the investigation of UVA radiation for the moment, and we shall see what occurs, and we shall proceed in the same way for the ultraviolet B radiation. Here then, if you look, with the ultraviolet B, you can see an urticarian eruption beginning to appear here, which is starting even with the weakest dose, which is one second of radiation. You can see the eruption appear before your eyes. And the patient is telling us that it is starting to itch. Can you confirm that? It has started to itch? There you are. She's definitely confirming this. The patient is manifestly sensitive to extremely weak doses of UVB radiation. With a UVA radiation, something may be happening. You can see it happening here, yes. There it is, eruption in UVA after radiation time of three seconds. We can see it clearly, the urticaria has developed. There, however, you can see that the weakest UVA dose had no effect. We can therefore say that the minimal urticarian dose is situated here. Right, here we have a phototherapy cubicle, which is going to be used in this particular case to desensitize this patient who has a solar urticaria, which needs just a few seconds for the eruption to be activated. He had a minimal urticarial dose which was around 100 millijoules per square centimeter of UVB radiation. And the same for UVA, I believe, and here we are managing to give him doses of 900 millijoules of UVA radiation. So we have made significant progress in this patient's tolerance threshold. That's it. Now the patient is capable of tolerating doses which are easily seven or eight times higher than what he was receiving in the beginning. That's more or less the case. So today we shall program the administration of 900 millijoules as this is the dose which was planned. Okay, don't forget the glasses, of course. Right, if you'd like to go in, there we are. You know how it works? Okay, have you got your glasses on? Right, this is going to take roughly a minute and a half. Obviously, there is no question of administering doses that are too high, as this would risk provoking an anaphylactic shock reaction, of course. So we have to be extremely careful with these techniques, which are only carried out in hospitals, obviously. Small urticaria papules. All I can say is that we are just at the limit of the minimal urticarial dose, but it is completely tolerable. From one session to the next, we try to increase the doses very, very gradually, but the result is indisputably there, nevertheless. If you could turn around, we might be able to see something at the back. Yes, you see, small reactions, small urticaria papules are appearing. Is it itching a lot? No, it's okay. All right, it's bearable. Okay. Look, we can see the difference with the zone that was covered by this is underwear. 
He can see the difference. It's very clear. But even so, he's currently tolerating it. There's no problem. There is not a general reaction, of course. Obviously, he's on antihistamine means. You can easily see the difference between the urticaria zones and the zones which did not receive the rays.